church, I invite you guys to stand and sing. We're going to declare and prophesy that Jesus is good. This song is called Look to the Sun. So I invite you guys to sing out this with us. Oh, we look to the sun. Set our eyes on the sea. Savior, see the image of love. 
love, come on. Sing his praises forever. Oh, we look to the sun. Set our eyes on our Savior. See the image of love. Sing his praises forever. Oh, we look to the sun. Yeah, we thank you, Jesus. We just thank you for this morning, Lord. I've searched the world, but it couldn't feel me. Man's empty praise, and treasures of faith, never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. Yes, you did. Every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Yeah, sing this out. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing it's better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain, yeah, he is the God of Your mercy and grace won't find me again. See us out. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. is better than you oh, there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing nothing is better than you oh he'll turn your morning into dancing won't it you turn morning to dancing beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn our morning you turn morning to dancing oh yes you do you get beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Sing it out. Better than you. Oh, there's nothing that is better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Turn on board it.
Yes, you are. Oh, praise God. He's the only one. Made a way through the sea. He's given resurrection life this morning. Come on, sing it out today. Come on, you can be joyful today in your situation. You turn shame into glory. Let's just do the voices real quick. There's nothing. Oh, there's nothing. Come on, church. Even in the midst of your situation today, you. oh, I'm tired of settling for lesser loves. Jesus, I'm tired of settling for the artificial Lord, and the generic. Nothing. That there's a love that's beyond every other love. Nothing is better. There's a love than that's greater you. than any love. There's nothing. Yes, yeah, sing that's it greater out. There's you. nothing better. That from oh, this day nothing. forward, I will no longer settle. Better than you. Come on, church. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing. Better I'm declaring that today you, in my heart Lord, there's that there's nothing. nothing. One more time. Nothing. Come on, let's do that chorus together. Come on, sing it out with everything you have today. There's nothing. Oh Jesus. There's nothing. Come on, church. That is better than you. There's nothing. There's nothing. I'm tired of settling. Better than you. I'm Lord, tired of settling. Nothing. nothing is better than you. Amen. Amen. Please be seated today. Amen. Amen. I pray that that's your prayer today. My name is Rob. I'm the lead pastor here. And on behalf of our entire faith family, we're so thankful that you're with us in worship today. We're so glad to have you. And I want to just do a little housekeeping before we go into our sermon time today. The first thing I want to talk to you about is about the Connect card. If you are a guest with us today, maybe this is your second or third time with us there is a little blue card in the back of every seat. We would love for you to fill that out. It's in the back of the pocket there. And we would love to hear from you, especially today if you say, Pastor Rob, I have surrendered to Christ for the first time. Or maybe you have been in a season where you're far away from God and God is calling you home today. We would love to hear from you. Okay, so you can take that card out of the back seat, fill it out sometime between now and the end of service. We have two little black boxes right here to my right, to your left on the way out. Just drop it in there. And our promise is this. We, we have a hassle-free guarantee. We're not going to hassle you or bother you. We may send you a little text message or one of our leaders may just call you to say, hey, thank you for being in worship with us. Thank you so much. The other thing is on there is about prayer and some other requests as well. The other thing I'll make you aware of is for the kids. They should have gotten a crossword puzzle when they came in today. Uh, as many of you know, we are not doing our Kids Celebrate Ministries and Celebration Kids Ministries right now uh, just to kind of be extra safe until the end of the season. And if you have a child or children that would love to follow along with us today, all of these crossword puzzles go with the sermon. And kids, at the end, if you turn it in in our cafe area, there's a little one of our Celebration Kids team members will be there. If you turn it in at the end of the service, they have a nice little gift for you as well. Uh, the next thing I'll make you aware of is about sermon notes. You should have received some sermon notes when you first came in today. If you did not get a copy and you want to follow along with us today in the message, Mr. Carlos, you saw him at the front door. His street name is Papa C., Right? That's what we call him. That's his, we want to give him his street cred, Papa C. Much love for you, brother. We love you, man. That guy serves faithfully every week. If you want a copy of Sermon Notes, 
all you have to do is, and some of you I know don't believe in raising your hands in church, but you can on this time. You could just do like this, and, and he, will, he will make sure to get a copy for you so you can follow along. He's going to be walking through the worship center uh, during this time. And then the last thing I'll make you aware of is about our fall festival. Uh, we're doing this a little differently this year. We debated whether or not to do this. We are not having people come in the building. We're not doing booths. We are just going to do a drive-by. So we have several of our team members that are going to be set up here, and we're going to do a little drive-by. We're going to have some popcorn. We're going to have a drive-in movie uh, that they can watch from their car or sit in, in the parking lot. We still want to be a blessing because here's the thing I want you to see, church. The thing I want you to see is we do want to be cautious, but we don't want to be fearful. There's a difference. There's a difference between being cautious and diligent, and there's a difference between allowing this thing to imprison us in fear. Right, So we still want to be a blessing to our city. We still want to be a blessing to our community. You can see the date there. If you would love to serve on that and be part of that, just be here by 530 on Thursday. We will put you to work, I promise, and we will make sure that you are a blessing to those that are going to be visiting us and being with us that night. So I want to pray for us real quickly. Uh, and then I'm going to ask him to lead us in a chorus, and then I'm going to introduce to you our guest speaker today. Father, we love you, and we thank you so much for Jesus. We thank you that we get one more opportunity to come into this auditorium and to bless you and to declare with all of our heart that there's nothing that is better than you. So, God, we pray for every church, every church in this region. We pray that Jesus would boldly be proclaimed and that he would do what only he is capable of doing to save sinners to set captives free to heal the brokenhearted come on would you just tell them do what only you can do jesus you're such a good god and we thank you today so we're going to lead this one more time that i'm going to introduce you to our guest speaker will you lead us jake come on there's nothing will you just sing it sing from your seat out. right there sing come on right to him. oh there's nothing come on in your heart. Better than Let your love you. be loud today. Oh, there's nothing. My love is loud today. Better there's than nothing. You, Lord, I've tried there's so nothing. many lesser loves, and they were unsatisfying nothing and unfulfilling. But today, you. today I'm declaring that this is the one oh, true Jesus. love of my life. Yeah, there's nothing. Come on, church. Better than you. There's nothing. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing. Not success. Better than not relationships. You, Lord, not substances. Nothing. I'm tired Nothing of settling for the artificial. One more time. You. Come on. Yeah. Oh, there's Come nothing. On. Would you declare it with us today? Better than you. Oh, oh there's, there's nothing. nothing. Yes. Better than you. Nothing. Oh, there's nothing. Yes. Amen. Nothing is better Amen. than Amen. Amen. Well, listen, many of you, if you're a guest with us, you may not know this, but many of you know this. We adhere to a multiple speaker model. I don't believe the most biblical representation of a church model is just to have one person speak every Sunday. We believe in using multiple people here, multiple voices. And uh, the story here, I'm, I'm going to share with you about my, my good friend, Corey. And this is a true story that I'm going to share with you. And I'm just radical enough to do things like this. So um, the, Holy, the Holy Spirit, I, I saw an ad that Corey was running on Facebook. This is a true story. I'm not making this up. And I'm just that type of a D personality that I'm like, you know what? God's telling me that I'm supposed to connect with this guy. Okay. Now, most of you introverted, you're like scared already. So just stay with me. Okay. Strap in. <laughs> strap in here. And so God says, I want you, I have a purpose for you meeting this guy. I didn't know what the purpose was. I actually sent him a message, and it took him about a week and a half, maybe 10 to 12 days. So I thought, well, this guy thinks I'm psycho now. He thinks I'm probably some kind of creeper. You know, he's like, who's this little Mexican dude trying to reach out to me on the Internet? You know, I'm not into all that, you know, that kind of thing. And, uh, and, and, and so he finally messaged me back, and we met for uh, lunch. And it just really birthed a friendship and a relationship that I'm so thankful for. Here's the point that I want you to, the two points that I want to make this morning. Number one is always listen to God. If the Holy Spirit tells you to do something, do something. Amen. And number two, listen to me. I, I want you to come in real close and I'm going to introduce my good friend Corey to you. Some of us don't have community today because we haven't been intentional about being in community. Let that be a word for you today. That you never know that you may need the friendship, yes, but you never know you may be the one friend that that person is searching for. Amen? 
So you take the charge. Be intentional about being community because you were not born in this world to do life alone. Isn't that awesome? We don't have to do life alone. We can do life together. So Corey is a great guy. This is Corey Lee. Can we just give him a, a, a warm celebration church welcome? I'll let you tell your side of the version because it may be scarier than mine. But love you, man. Appreciate you so much. All right. <clears throat> well, good morning, Celebration Church. Y'all doing all right today? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so one of the things Rob did not say was in one of those meetings, he said, um, the Holy Spirit is telling me to ask you to come speak. And I'm like, well, you know, uh, I've never spoken on a Sunday morning. So, and uh, if the Holy Spirit's telling you that, hey, I'm sure he's going to tell me what to say, but right now I ain't got nothing, right? So, um, <laughs> Anyway, I, I do appreciate you guys allowing me to come. My name is Corey Lee, and uh, really excited about being here with you guys. Um, like Rob said, he he reached out to me, and we've gotten to know each other a little bit over the last few weeks, and I really like uh, talking to Rob, because every time we meet, I always walk away with some kind of uh, nugget of information. I always walk away a bit more encouraged, inspired, and more knowledge, but I also don't know if you can tell from down there or not, but I'm a little short dude, right? So I kind of I kind of like standing next to Pastor Rob and speaking to him because I can kind of I can kind of see eye to eye with him. You know, we're we're on eye level. It's a little bit different though when I'm talking to Mr. Dale. You know, it's I got cricks in my neck and back. You know, but uh, it, I'm really excited about sharing what God's laid on my heart today, and we're gonna. I'm going to read in 1 Peter 5, and then I'm going to pray for us real quick and uh, just take it where, where the Lord takes it. Uh, but we're titled the message today, People of Value Who Value People. See, the world will tell you who you should be, but the Word says who you are. So let's take a look. 1 Peter 5, uh, starting in verse 5, it says, In the same way, the younger ones should willingly support the leadership of the elders in every relationship. Each of you must wrap around yourself the apron of a humble servant because God resists you when you are proud, but multiplies grace and favor when you're humble. If you bow low in God's awesome presence, he will eventually exalt you as you leave the timing in his hands. Pour out all your worries and stress upon him and leave them there, for he always tenderly cares for you. Be well balanced and always alert because your enemy, the devil, roams around incessantly like a roam, roaring lion looking for his prey to devour. Take a decisive stand against him and resist his every attack with strong, vigorous faith. For you know that believers, uh, your believing brothers and sisters around the world, are experiencing the same kinds of trouble you endure. And then, after your brief suffering, the God of all loving grace who has called you to share in this eternal glory in Christ will personally and powerfully restore you and make you stronger than ever. Yes, he will set you firmly in place and build you up, and he has all the power needed to do this forever. Amen. Let's pray real quick. So, <clears throat> Lord, we just thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for loving every single one of us in this room. We thank you for turning graves into gardens. We thank you for turning dry bones into armies. And uh, we just thank you for this day. There's a Toby Max song that says, Steal my show. And, and Jesus, we just say, Steal the stage and your name be glorified through this. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. All right. So there's three things that I notice whenever I kind of look right here. I see, you know, Peter tells us that we should be humble, that we should be stand guard, and that we should receive restoration, that free gift of grace and mercy through Jesus Christ, right? But what's really interesting to me is, who wrote this, right? It was Peter, who years before, he's, a, he's in the upper room with a, Jesus and all the other disciples, and is right before Jesus was betrayed and uh, about to be crucified, and Jesus calls Peter over, he says, hey, Peter, come here, you know, the enemy has asked for permission to sift you like wheat and to test your faith. But Peter, I prayed for you that when you are restored, that you'll make it your life's work to build up the faith of your brothers and sisters. 
And uh, Peter's like, no, no, Jesus, ain't no way. Look, I look, I am ready to go to jail. Hey, Jesus, I'm even ready to die for you. And Jesus said, Pete, you know, before the rooster crows, you'll deny me three times that you even know me. So when Peter says that we should stay humble, he knows what it's like to be arrogant. When he says we should stand guard, he knows what it's like to let the guard down. And when we should receive that restoration, he knows what that is all about, right? And there's this leadership principle that I've kind of learned along the way. That's kind of my background there, and that's don't should on people right? Don't should on people. Don't tell people what they should do if you've never done it. Don't tell people how they should act and what they should try if you've never attempted it. Don't should on people. But also, the flip side of that is don't let the world should on you. See, the world will tell you who you should be, but it's the word that tells you who you are. He said that we should stand guard Because there's an enemy out there like a lion looking to who he can devour. We should receive that restoration. And then he says we should be humble because God resists you when you are proud, but he multiplies grace and favor when you're humble. Stay humble. Stay humble. That's my old friend. Stay humble. So my wife and I, um, we, we are originally from this area. Uh, here with my wife, we've been married for 14 years. we got three kids. Yeah, there you go. But the beginning of that story is uh, we, we started in eighth grade when she begged me to go to the eighth grade prom with her, right? So uh, I've, I, <laughs> I've got the mic. She may say it differently if she had the mic. But, uh, we're here with our three kids, Colton, Kendall, and Brady, and my mom and our niece, and excited to be here. But... Um, we are originally from this area, originally from Baldwin. We grew up in Baldwin. When we got married, we moved away to Alabama and then South Mississippi, Phoenix, Arizona. And then about nine years ago, we moved back to uh, the Tupelo area. We live in Morville now and um, really excited about what God's doing in our lives. But uh, originally from Baldwin, I was raised at an early age by my mom and my grandmother. That's because when I was about three... My dad, he decided he was going to move to Chicago with another lady and left my mom with a three-year-old and a one-year-old to raise on her own. But she wasn't on her own. She had my grandmother. And, uh, you know, I can still, still to this day, I can hear my grandmother's voice. She would say, these, these, two, these two grandbaby boys of mine, they ain't growing up to be no sissies. They ain't growing up to be no sissies. She would, we'd be at her house, and she'd say, boys, get out here. We'd get up, and we'd walk through her house to go into her carport. And, y'all, she would have her car jacked up with the driver's side tire laid over, and she'd say, pick it up, put it back on. You know, I'm over there like five trying to lift this tire, and I can't even lift the tire, right? I mean, she would have us in her bathroom with a plunger just, you know, hovered over her toilet trying to just unclog this unclogged toilet. There's nothing wrong with the toilet, right? But she was living out that old John Wooden quote that says, when opportunity comes, it's too late to prepare, right? She wanted us to be ready for when that tire was flat. She wanted us to be ready for when that toilet was clogged up. And my mom and my grandmother, they did the best they could. They loved us. But it was in this culture and the whole society that we were programmed to believe certain things. We were programmed to believe things about you, and we were programmed to believe things uh, about me and my potential and what I could and could not do. Culture had uh, programmed us uh, to think, you know, if you lived in a big old house with a swimming pool, with a little twirly, twirly slide going down to the swimming pool, then that said something about who you should be. And if you lived in a little bitty run-down shack, then that said something about who you should be. We're programmed to believe that If you wore those cool new Jordan shoes, then that meant something about you. But if you wore that Walmart brand with a little Velcro across the top, then that says something about you. Program to believe if you went to a certain kind of church, that says something about you. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, We also had some sayings. Sayings like, you know, you got to be in the right place at the right time. You uh, don't take risk because it's better to be safe than it is to be sorry. But the one, the one that affected me the most in the most negative way was stay humble. 
Stay humble. See, that's a great saying if you understand what true humility really is. I thought humility was thinking less of myself and thinking other people were better than me, that I, didn't, I wasn't good enough. I didn't have the good enough gifts or the talents and the abilities. And because of that, I lacked a lot of self-confidence. See, I decided to go to college to be a physical therapist assistant because I didn't think I was smart enough to be a real physical therapist. I had an invitation to uh, walk on and play college baseball. But because I knew, I knew in my heart and in my mind, the catcher that team already had was way better than me. And I didn't deserve to be on the same field as that guy. That I didn't even show up for my own tryout. And it's all because I didn't understand what humility was. And uh, it wasn't until a while back I heard Adrian Rogers speaking on humility. Any of you guys ever listen to Adrian Rogers? Yeah, he's got some good stuff. But he said, humility is a form of rebellion. I thought, wow, that's, that's kind of interesting. He said, humility is a form of rebellion. See, most of, we all have these gifts and these talents, and most of us think if we let those gifts and talents shine, then that's called arrogance. And Adrian Rogers said, no, no, that's not arrogance. That's awareness. And the moment you step in and you don't bring that forward, the moment you step in and you hold back and you decide to settle for something less because you're having a sense of humility then that's rebellion against the gifts that God has freely given you. I was like, wow, you know? And uh, l- let me say it this way. You guys ever heard the law of gravity? Yeah. Well, there's another law um, called the law of polarity. Law of polarity. I don't know if you've ever heard of this or not, but ever heard that saying, but we all know what it is, law of polarity. So if you think about, you got this long pole, right? No, one end of the pole is hot. And then on the opposite end of the pole, it's cold, right? They're on the same pole, just on opposite ends. Y'all have heard the, heard the phrase polar opposites, right? Yeah. Well, that's where it comes from, the law of polarity. So it's the law of opposites. If I have hot, then I've got cold. If I have up, I have down. If I have inside, I have outside. If I have right, then I have left, right? So if you think about humility on this pole, on one end of the pole is arrogance and pride that says, Look at me, look at me, look what I done did, right? I'm awesome, right? Look at me. On the opposite end of that pole is this false humility that says, oh, woe is me. Woe is me. I'm awful, right? I'm not as good. I would like to. I wish I could, but I'm just not that good. It's woe is me. And here's the deal. Look at me, look at me, and woe is me, woe is me, both point back to me. And it ain't about me. Check out First Peter Chapter 4, right here, verse 11. He says, for example, if you have a speaking gift, speak as though God were speaking his words through you. If you have the gift of serving, do it passionately with the strength God gives you, so that in everything God alone will be glorified through Jesus Christ, for to him belongs the glory, the power forever, through all the ages. Amen. Amen, right? So humility isn't thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. It's recognizing the gifts and the talents and the abilities that you've been given, using those gifts and talents to serve other people all for the glory of God the Father, right? Yeah. So one thing I know about every single one of us in this room is that we all have gifts and talents. We've been unique, uh, uniquely created, right? And And there has never, never been anybody exactly like you. And there never will be anybody exactly like you, right? This world needs you. This world needs your gifts. This world needs your talents. And if we choose not to bring those forward, we don't only hurt ourselves, we also rob the world of something truly incredible. It's also the body of Christ, right? So every single one of us in here have that. And, you know... (coughs) Here's one thing I found, too, is, you know, we can sit here on a Sunday morning, we're in nice, nice cushion chairs, and it feels good in here, and, you know, maybe the weather's great outside, and we can smile and nod and say, yeah, yeah, I, you know, hey, I can get down with that, right? I know people are valuable. I know people are talented and gifted. Yeah, I, I agree with that. But we have a hard time personalizing that, right? 
I say, I, I see everything that Rob is doing. I know that guy's, uh, you know, I, I know he's valuable. I see Matt and BJ and Kim, and I can see all that they're doing, and I know that they're valuable, but I have a hard time saying, so am I, right? So am I. And we have to personalize that. I am a person of value. I am valuable. I am talented. I'm gifted. I'm unique. I'm one of a kind, custom made, created in the image of God, fearfully and wonderfully made, knit together in my mother's womb. He has plans for me, plans to give me a hope and a future. And if I am in Christ, then I'm a king's kid, right? I'm a child of the king, filled with his spirit. I have the mind of Christ. I'm his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. I'm bold, I'm confident, I'm courageous because I've been given the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. I'm redeemed, I'm victorious, I'm an overcomer, more than a conqueror. I am forgiven, and I am loved. I am a person of value, and so are you, right? So, you know what, <coughs> go ahead and look at your neighbor right now. Tell your neighbor, I am a person of value, and so are you. Go ahead and tell your neighbor that. There you go. <laughs> take, a, take a look at your other neighbor. I know for them it may be a little bit questionable, but go ahead and tell them, I'm a person of value and you are too. Go ahead and let them know that. <clears throat> All right. So we are people of value, right? And we're, we're created and designed to value people. We have gifts and talents and abilities and all the great things that God has given to us. But the question is, what are we going to do with it? What are you going to do about what you've been given? The gifts that you've been given, the time and the talent and the treasures you've been given. What are you going to do with what you've been given? Will we be found faithful to what the Lord has given to us? Let's, let's check out. I want to... I want to kind of finish our time out <laughs> today with a parable that Jesus told. And this is in uh, Luke 19, all right? And I'm going to read this. I know it's a little bit long, but it, it doesn't make it, uh, it makes it good whenever, whenever it's a story form, right? So this is Luke 19, 11, all right? <clears throat> At this time, Jesus was getting close to entering Jerusalem. The crowds that followed him were convinced that God's kingdom realm would fully manifest when Jesus established it in Jerusalem. So he told them this story to kind of change their perspective, right? He said, once there was a wealthy prince who, who left his province to travel to a distant land where he would be crowned king and then return. Before he departed, he summoned his ten servants together and said, I am entrusting each of you with $50,000 to trade with while I'm away. Invest in it and put it to work until I return. Some of his countrymen despised the prince and sent a delegation after him to declare before the royals, We refuse to let this man rule over us. He will not be our king. Nevertheless, he was crowned king and returned to his land, and then he summoned his ten servants to see how much each one had earned and what their profits uh, came to. The first one came forward and said, Master, look! Look what you gave me and invested it, and it multiplied ten times. Splendid! You have done well, my excellent servant, because you have shown that you can be trusted in this small matter. I now grant you authority to rule over ten fortress cities. Then the second came and said, Master, what you left with me has multiplied five times. He said, I also grant you authority in my kingdom over five fortress cities. Another came before the king and said, Master, here is the money you entrusted to me. I hid it for safekeeping. You see, I live in fear of you, for everyone knows you are a strict master and impossible to please. You push us for a high return on all that you own, and you always want to gain from someone else's effort. The king said, You wicked servant, I will judge you using your own words. If what you said about me is true, that I'm a harsh man pushing you for a high return and wanting gain from others' efforts, why didn't you at least put my money in the bank to earn some interest on what I entrusted to you? The king said to his other servants, Take the money he has and give it to the faithful servant who multiplied my money. I, I love this kind of part right here. Um, they said, But master, hold on a second. This other servant objected. Why, why give it to him? He already has so much. Yes, replied the king, but to all who have been faithful, even more 
will be given them. And for the ones who have nothing, even the little they seem to have, will be taken from them. So there's a couple of things that, that, that are right there that jump out to me. You take a look at these first two guys. They come to the king. They took what they were given. They put it to work. They, they multiplied it, and then they brought it back to the king. And the king multiplied grace and favor to them. Did you see that? Like, he gave them money. Now he gave them authority. He gave them authority over cities. The, other, the, the third guy, he took what he was given, and out of fear, he, he did nothing with it, right? He did nothing with it. And in this parable, in this story, the king took from him and gave it to someone who had been found faithful with what they were given, right? So, the, so kind of the question that we have to answer is, you know, what will we do with what we've been given? Will we be found faithful for what, with what we do have so that we can be entrusted with what we don't yet have, right? And then the last thing that, that I want to kind of share right here is, you know, it's not in here, but I know, I know enough about relationships and communication that I'm going to say, you know, those first two guys, they knew the king, right? Like, they, they knew the king. They didn't really, they didn't just know of the king, but they knew the king. They didn't just hear of the king. They were in relationship with the king. You can see in their interaction right there, he, the king was excited, obviously, to get a return, but he was excited for them as well, right? And this other guy, the third guy, I think he just knew of the king. He didn't really know the king, right? Because look what he said. He said, for everybody knows you are a strict master and impossible to please. You push us for a high return on all that you own, and you always want to gain from someone else's effort. If that were true, he wouldn't have multiplied grace and favor to the other two. So he didn't really know the king. And I know there, there, there are people in here, you know, you know the king, right? You know King Jesus. You know what it's like whenever he says, you know, I come to give you life and life abundantly. You know what that's all about. You've tasted and seen. And there may be some of you in here that just know of King Jesus, right? I mean, we're in the Bible Belt. You, you've probably at least heard of King Jesus. But you haven't taken that next step into a relationship with King Jesus. And Jesus says, come to me, right? All you who are weary, come to me and I'll give you rest, right? He says, you know, all the burdens that are on your back, everything that's weighing you down, you just kind of lay them at the feet of King Jesus. All that fear and anxiety and, and pain and, uh, you know, false humility and pride, just take that off and lay it at the feet of King Jesus. Maybe there's some kind of addiction that's just weighing you down. You just cannot get past it. You just lay it at the feet of King Jesus. Maybe you've done some bad things. Maybe you're doing some bad things, and you just can't forgive yourself. Jesus said, lay it down at the feet of King Jesus. And he says, I got this. I'll take that on me. Leave it here. Leave it behind and come follow me, right? So, you know, if there's just one thing that I can leave with you guys as we wrap up, um, I know we're probably going super fast here, <laughs> uh, but if there's only one thing that I can leave with you guys, that's I hope you realize that you are a person of value. And you're so valuable, in fact, that the creator of this universe, the creator that spoke and phew, there were stars in the sky and moons and galaxies and all that kind of good stuff. The, the creator that spoke and there were grass and trees and bees and butterflies and birds and you, right? The creator that created you. He loves you so much that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for your sins and my sins. And it is a free gift. It's a free gift. We don't do anything to earn that. It's just come to the feet of King Jesus. So I appreciate you guys uh, allowing me the opportunity to share. Um, and I know we're going to sing a song. If you have a decision to make, we have pastors here that will help you with that. If, if, if you're needing prayer, I mean, that's what we're here for too, right? And we've got pastors that will help pray uh, with you. If you've got a decision to make, if you've got some things you need to lay at the feet of King Jesus, 
we'll help you with that as well. So let's sing us out right here. Yes. I'd like you guys to sing out this chorus with me. It just simply says, love came down and rescued me. Can you believe that this morning? So wherever you are this morning, just come on. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. Sing out. Mountain high or valley low, I'll sing out for my, my soul. I'm yours. I'm forever yours. Love came down. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down, set me free. I'm yours. I'm forever yours, mountain high, mountain high, oh valley low, I'll sing out for my, my soul, I'm yours, I'm forever yours, sing, I am yours. to him this morning we give it all to you lord we give it all come on one more time sing this out love came down love came down and rescued me love came down come on church. set me free i'm yours aren't you glad that love didn't wait for you to make the first move that perfect love made the first move We never be callous to the love of God. Come on. Love came down and rescued me. Come on, he came down. Love came down. He wants to rescue you today. If you don't know him, my heart for you today is that you would cry out to him and you would say, Rescue me today. I need rescue today. I'm desperate for you. I need you, Jesus. I'm tired of being my own king. I'm tired of being the old CEO of my heart. But I lay my yes down to you. has done. I'm his. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what I feel like today. I may not feel like a son or a daughter, but the word says, the word says that I am his because of everything that Jesus has done. May we never become calloused to be in his. Amen. Amen. One more time. I'm yours. And I am yours. Some of you need to remind your heart of that today. I'm his. I'm his. I'm his because his word says it. Love came down. Come on, love came down. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and me. Come on, if you don't know him today, it's as simple as saying, I want to know you. 
I repent of my sin. I'm tired of being my own sovereign king. I'm tired of doing things on my own. And I lay down. I give you all the keys to the kingdom today. Take charge of this heart. One more time. Love came down. myself sometimes amen that I'm his how many people know that life will make you forget that really quickly amen amen please be seated amen amen well Corey come back up here real quick Corey right before he, he gets out of here and, and, and I'll let people see me stand next to you so you can look tall and whatever but but uh, can we just give him a hand and say thank you so much for sharing today and, and listen we we never we, we've always wanted to be a church when God planned called us to plant this church we always want to be an empowering church. So I just want to pray for you before you sit down, okay? Yeah, that'd be great. That this would just be the beginning and the birthing of a ministry in your life. Oh, Amen. Can we you. do that? Yeah. Can we just pray for him? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my friend, Corey. And I thank you that you are birthing something new in him right now for such a time as this. That souls will be saved. That marriages will be restored. That lives will be healed that hearts will be rescued because of the ministry that you have birthed in him and Kim. So, Father, right now we pray for the boldness. We pray for the courage. And, Father, we don't pray for self-confidence, but we pray for more Christ confidence. That when he feels like he can't do it, that's okay because you can. And so, Father, we pray right now that this is a new season of ministry. So we pray for open doors open doors and we thank you for the favor we thank you for the favor that you're putting on this family's life for your glory for your glory alone will you agree with me today yeah. amen. 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 amen amen appreciate, appreciate you brother you, appreciate buddy. you man <laughs> yeah awesome amen amen they're probably glad that you only went 20 minutes because they're like dang pastor rob's a little long-winded sometimes i'm sure glad that we get to get out of here a little bit sooner to smash on that cheese dip a little bit sooner amen Amen. Don't get used to it, though. Praise God. Thank, that's a prophetic word from heaven. It just came down. Thank you, Jesus. T speak to all their hearts right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Listen, as we get ready to close, a couple of things real quick I want to make you aware of, and I want to do something special here at the end. Number one is if, if just to remind you about those connect cards in the back of every seat. If you are a guest with us today and, and you said, hey, I surrendered to Christ for the first time, we would love to hear from you. We never take it for granted whether you're a first, second, or third time guest or whether you've been sitting here for five years. We never take it for granted that you know Jesus. We do not want you to know a lot of things about Jesus. We want you to know him intimately and passionately. So you could take those, fill those out, put those in these two black boxes to my right and your left. And this is also the time that we do our offering. We do our offering just a little different here. We don't pass around buckets or plates. But if you're watching us online today, the easiest way to give is through that link in the video description. The easiest way for many of us and many of you are doing it now is just give digitally. Go to celebrationchurchms.org or .com. There's a give button. It's real simple. It takes literally like two minutes. Or you can drop them in the two black boxes back here, any offering or tithe that you may have today. And this is mainly for those that call Celebration Church their faith, family, home, their, their family. But listen to me, and I want you to come in really closely, that if the Lord is leading you to sow into this ministry, I want to make it very clear, you're not giving to Rob or to Celebration Church. You're giving to God through this ministry. And here's my promise to you, is that we would use it in such a way that he would get all the glory and credit for it. That's what we want here, is that he gets all the glory and credit for it. The other thing I'll remind you of is for kids, is the crossword puzzle. Don't forget to turn that in. If you miss some answers, I wouldn't bum rush Corey all at one time, but I'm sure that if you wanted to get some answers, he would be more than happy to give those to you. If you missed it during the sermon, you simply go right out here to the cafe area, turn those in, and one of our Celebration Kid Dream Team members is going to make sure you get a nice little gift. And then for our guest as well, we have something for you. If this is your first time with us, 
we just want to bless you and say thank you for being in worship with us today. So I'm going to pray for an offering, and then we're going to close out. I'm going to do something special before we leave here today. Father, we love you, and we thank you. And now we get one more opportunity to sow into your kingdom. God, maybe we be found faithful in that area, and would you use it to reach more souls? Not only here in Tupelo and surrounding areas, but around the world. God, would you use us to give in such a way that we can help advance your kingdom. We thank you that we give an op one more opportunity to give back to you for your glory. Amen and amen. Listen, before we cut out of here today, two quick things. One is we are starting a brand new series in two weeks called 10,000 Reasons. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be awesome. And uh, trust me, we're going to talk about worship and Thanksgiving and how we can worship in the midst of this crisis. So you don't want to miss it. That's in two weeks. And then what I want to do before we get out of here today is I want to honor some people um, before we get out of here. Many of you may not know this, um, but this is Pastor Appreciation Month. And I think sometimes we forget. Hope will you, will you bring those up here? I think sometimes we, we forget to honor the people that labor so faithfully and diligently. And so I want to do that today, right? I'm not worried about myself. I don't care about all that stuff. I do it for the glory of God. He rescued this sinner 20-something years ago. Listen, I don't care about appreciation, anything, because I know who I am. And he's done so much for me, amen? And so I just want to be a blessing to others, but I don't want to forget the other pastors here that labor so diligently. And I just want to say this too while, while I'm thinking about it, and then we're going to honor them. And I just want to pray over all of them today, and then we're going to, to break. I promise you the hot sauce will still be there in just a few minutes. But but I, I want to say this too, and, and to every wife of the pastor, to, to Tammy, and to Cassie, and to, um, to my wife, Gina. And, 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 you know, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to do what we do. Thank you for allowing Pastor Matt to do what he does. Cassie, thank you if she's in here for allowing Justin to do what he does. And, and because what you don't realize is that sometimes when they're serving you, they sometimes have to leave the family at the house. Okay? I want you to see the sacrifice that's made. That, that when they're serving you and they're making sure that everything is going on here, and I want to just say this, too, because a lot of people don't know this. None of these guys get paid. We call it volunteercational here. But they realize that they are storing treasures up in heaven. Amen. So I want to honor them. The Bible tells us to honor them. And so I want to do that. So I, I want to start with Pastor Matt. Pastor Matt, if you'll, you'll come up here. Amen. Amen. Come on up here, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on up. And he's, he's representing the roll tie today, but that's okay. Amen. So I want to give this to him. And, and I, I just want to say that I'm so proud of this guy right here. And, and just had a God moment about 12 years ago, 10 years ago, and it changed his life. And so proud of the man of God that he's become. Amen. It's, it's, I mean, for those that were here that have seen him the last this year grow in the speaking and just hurling the word of God and preaching the gospel unashamedly, I just want to say to you, man, I love you, and I'm so thankful for your friendship and, and so thankful for you. So stay up here. And uh, Tammy, once again, thank you. A lot of people don't realize. Yeah, give, give Tammy a hand. Sometimes we forget that. We forget that, that, that the wives and the families sacrifice a great deal as well. Is BJ here? BJ, come on up, Pastor BJ. And, and I want to say to Sarah, we have like five Sarahs here, but to Sarah, BJ Sarah, we want to say thank you so much. And, and thank you for, your, for sharing him with us. And uh, so proud of this guy as well and for what he uh, means to us and to see the man of God that he has grown up to, to be, so to speak, and to see him leading our worship team and empowering. Yeah, right? And just want to say, man, I love you, and thank you. Thank you for everything that, that you've done. This guy, man, you, you understand, these, I call these the, the original OGs right here because when we had nothing, like literally nothing, th th this, this is a true story. We showed up to a vision meeting at Matt's house, and Tammy can testify. This is their old house. I, it was 
Pine Creek or Timber something, Timber something, Timber, Shiver Me Timbers, whatever. It was somewhere where there was a timber, okay? <laughs> Literally like five people showed up to the vision meeting and three of them said they didn't want to do it. So, you know what I mean? I mean, it was, it was like, yeah, we're really encouraged for the glory of God. Let's charge this mountain. Not, right? Not. But, but I want to say these guys have stuck there when it was nothing. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm, I'm thankful that they bought into the why. And, and that they stuck it out. So I'm very, very thankful for you guys. Thank you for your friendship and for your families. The next person I want to honor is he's, he's kind of the rookie, the new kid on the block. I don't think he's part of that group. But uh, you come on up here, J Pastor Justin. And uh, uh, he, he's our feisty one. Okay. And, and, and we're so thankful for him. I want to honor you today, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything that you do. And I love these guys because they all have different personalities and they've all stepped up. And, and when Pastor Rob has to work a lot, these guys, man, they're like, how, how can I shoulder the, the vision with you? How can I shoulder the responsibilities with you? And I just want to say, I don't know if Kathy's in here, but to thank you to her as well. So can we just pray over them real quickly before we get out of here? Um, then I'll make mention of one more thing. Father, I just thank you for these three men and their families. And I thank you that this is just the beginning. That you're calling them to a deeper walk. You're calling them to sacrifice more. You're calling them to give up more. You're calling them, God, to pave the way for more people to come in this city and surrounding cities to know you. To know you, because that's the ultimate goal, is to be conformed into the image of your son so that others would see the sun in us, so that they, too, would want to know the sun. So, Father, I pray for fresh vision. I pray for renewed strength. I pray for a boldness and a courage, God, to keep pressing in, to keep fighting, to keep being the forerunners that you've called them to be. I pray for their families, too, God, that you would protect them and that you would surround them and that you would build them up as well for your glory and your glory alone. Amen. Amen. Will you give these guys a hand one more time? Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah, man. These guys, I tell you, if it wasn't for those guys, it would be really, really hard. And, and, and um, I just want to say thank you to my wife. As, as well. A lot of times she's only known as Rob's wife, but she has a name and her name is Gina that, that, uh, listen, I'm so thankful to have a wife that puts up with all these crazy ideas and that somebody would plant a church for whosoever. And so thank you, Ed. Thank you for that. Thank you for, 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 for that. And thank you for, listen, and then one more person I want to honor real quick is, is Hope. Hope, will you stand just for a second? A lot of people, she, she's not a pastor per se and has a title, but a lot of people don't know that she is really the glue that holds a lot of this together. And so I want to say thank you to Jake as well, wherever he's at. And I want to say thank you guys. I mean, they, they stay up here sometimes like all day. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And then I want to say finally to all of you and watching online, thank you. Thank you for, I want to appreciate you. Thank you for buying into the vision. Thank you for sowing into this ministry. Thank you for helping us along these past five and a half, six years. Thank you. But can I just be brutally honest with you? I'm not content with just this. There's thousands and thousands of people in our city that need to know Jesus. And I want to rub some of the, I want to rob some souls from hell, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to take it by storm. And we need some bold people to step up and say, I'm ready. Use me, God, for your glory. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to pray for all of us again, and then we're going to close shop. Father, we love you, and we thank you today for Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are so awesome, and you're so big, 
And we declare today that we are yours, that we leave here today with absolute Christ confidence that we are yours, that we've been redeemed, that we've been purchased, that we've been adopted, that we've been forgiven. So, Father, heal the hearts that need to be healed today. Set the people free that need to be set free today. God, do what only you can do. And, guys, as we go out of here, Carlos, will you lead us in that I am yours? Can will you stand with me today? And will you declare that as you get ready to leave? Come on. Will you declare that as you leave here today? As you walk out of here and you walk out of here with your head high and you say, I am his. I know whose I am today. I know who I belong to today. Listen, have a great Sunday. We're so thankful for you. Come on, sing it as you walk out today. I am yours. Come on, boldly and confidently today. Oh my church. Jesus. Come on, as you sing it in your car. Sing it on the way to the restaurant. Sing it in your home today. One more time, I'm yours. As we walk out of here today, I know who I am. Come on. I'm yours. Come on, love came down. Love came down. That's why I'm walking out of here today with confidence because love came down to me. And it rescued me and it set me free. Love came down, set me Forever yours. Forever yours. Mountain high. Doesn't matter. I'm reminding myself today of who's I am. Come on, maybe you need to remind yourself who your kids belong to today. That my kids may be far away. That may, my kids may not be in the place that I want them to be. But I know who they are. That me and my house, we belong to the Lord today. Come on, church. That's for someone today. That's for your children today. Come on. They were his. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me. This is for my household today. I am yours. Doesn't matter what the situation is like. Doesn't matter how far they may see. Mountain, I own valley low. I'll see how the mountain. Come on, one more time. I am yours. As we get out of here today. Come on. Yours. Come on, tell them. I know whose I am today. I know who I belong to. Come on, I feel beaten down. I feel like life has beat me up and spit me out. But today I'm reminding this soul. I'm reminding this weary soul of who I belong to. I am yours. That when I'm not enough, He is. When I don't have the strength, He has plenty. One more time, just the voices, I am yours, come on. Come on, church. Yes. I'm reminding myself today. Listen, God bless you guys. Have an awesome Sunday, and we hope to see some of you soon.